Yo, what's up guys? Anton here from Dropship Lifestyle and in today's episode of Dropship Weekly, we are going to talk about how to use Facebook ads to grow your brand. And listen, when I say grow your brand, I'm referring to a dropshipping store. Even if you've had one or you tried Facebook ads in the past for dropshipping or Shopify and it didn't work for you, this is going to be relevant to you. And if you're watching this right now and you're already running a successful business, Honestly, it doesn't matter. It could be drop shipping on Shopify. It could be private labeling. It could be that you know, you're just importing goods or you're making stuff in your garage and selling it online. It could even be that you're running affiliate deals because what I'm gonna share with you about how to build your brand with Facebook ads really is relevant to any business. And that's kind of the beauty with these brands. You don't have to monetize them in one way and one way only. You can monetize them in just, there's so many different ways to bring money into these things. So uh, I'm gonna talk about again how to do this if you're brand new or if you're already experienced with running a successful business now if you're watching this right now and you're thinking like Anton I've seen your videos before maybe you're a part of dropship lifestyle and maybe you've seen the fact that I typically say and I often say you should not use Facebook ads for dropshipping now like I clarify in a video that I'll link up above called stop using Facebook ads when I say that I'm talking about using Facebook ads for direct response basically you could watch that video that's linked up above in the cards if you're on YouTube uh, you could watch that video where I go into detail but that is because we don't want to show ads for our products let's just say I'm selling a $2,000 stand-up desk I don't want to have an ad for that in front of someone on Facebook that might be interested in ergonomics because what are the chances they're gonna click it go to my website spend 2,000 bucks right it does not work that well but with that being said I still am a huge fan of Facebook ads if used the right way in fact we spend almost 200 grand a month on Facebook ads alone. And again, I wouldn't be doing that if I just thought I was donating money to Zuckerberg, right? I'm doing it because it obviously increases our business. What it does is gives us more brand followers, what I call a tribe, it helps to build your tribe. It also helps you in the long run acquire customers for less because people are thinking of you as the authority, which of course part of this is becoming the authority in your industry so everybody knows who you are. That is why we do this. And finally, it increases the valuation of your business. When you have one of these real branded businesses, if you ever want to sell it, it's worth a lot more money than if it was a direct response type store. So while this isn't necessary to build a successful drop shipping business or e-commerce business, it definitely is something that I would highly recommend you do if you want to kind of go to that next level and become the authority in your industry, in your niche, whatever you want to call it. So that is what we are going to cover in this week's episode of Dropship Weekly. So what you're watching right now is actually part of a presentation that I gave last week. And I think this is the part that's most useful to everybody here on YouTube. So it's called Building Your Brand with Facebook Ads. And then as a little subtitle here, I put how to find your dream customers before you even start your business. Now, when I say before you even start your business, what I really mean is before you start making offers, you know, before you start actually saying, hey, here's this thing for sale, come and buy it. And this really is like a chicken and egg scenario because what you wanna do if you're gonna go this branding route is validate your idea first and that's before you invest money and time into things like finding suppliers things like doing product research and things like either creating in-depth content yourself or outsourcing to someone else to do that for you now let me also define what dream customers means like when I say that what I'm talking about because it's pretty a uh, vague statement but when I say this I'm referring to someone who will not only buy your products because that's great right and that's what we can get with direct response but when you do this through branding and you find your dream customers not only will they buy your products but they're also also going to actively engage with your content therefore increasing your brand reach. And I'll give you some examples of this, like real world examples in, a, in just a minute. But the way I want you to think of brand reach is how many people are exposed to your stuff. And I'm saying your stuff instead of your products because a lot of what goes into branding is creating awesome content. And if you create content that resonates with your audience and with your dream customer, when they see this content on social media, whether that be Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, 
YouTube, LinkedIn, Pinterest, wherever it is they hang out. Not only are they going to click like or you know react to it, chances are you can get a ton of people to share it and also comment on it. And when that happens, when people start engaging with your content and with your basically social media, the algorithms pick up the fact that people actually like this and then other people will see it as well. So if you show you know a funny picture to someone named Bob in Tennessee and Bob thinks it's funny and he clicks share, now all of his friends are gonna see it. Or if he just comments on it and writes ha 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 ha, now when his friends log in to their Facebook account, they're gonna see Bob just commented on this thing and said ha 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 ha. So that's why this is important. It increases our brand reach, it exposes our company to more people. So. How do we find these people though, right? How do we find our dream customers? Well, there's a few steps to this process. And the first is identifying your target market. Then it's finding your persona or your brand voice. After that, it's actually creating some content. So you don't have to go all in and make a year's worth of content. You could do this pretty simply to start and I'm gonna show you how. And then finally, step four is you need to find your people. So find where you think these people hang out and then put that content in front of them to see if your hypothesis proves to be correct. So let's go through some tips for target market. Now, this is like general rules of thumb, things we look for when we are doing our research. The first is that these people, right, this segment of people should be proud of their hobbies, their skills, their backgrounds, their traits. They should also be passionate about what it is that they're doing, what it is they're into. They should also be easily identifiable. And what I mean by that is you should be able to locate them online. And I don't mean personally, like, you know, find out where they live, but I mean, if you wanted to put a piece of content or a product in front of them, you should be able to find that segment of people online. And then also they should be niche. So uh, you, you need to have a specific subsection of a market. You can't just target everyone in the world because you want to. That's not gonna work when it comes to branding the way that we do it. So let me give you some good examples of uh, you know winners and losers. So a good example of a target market would be home grillers. So think people that you know barbecue every weekend and are always trying out new recipes, always having their buddies over. Uh, that would be a great niche, a great target market. Now, another good one would be student athletes, because when you think about student athletes, you know, super passionate and also easily identifiable, and they're definitely proud of their, in this example, it would be traits, which would be school and sport. Uh, another good example would be dog owners. Now, not every dog owner is super passionate about it, but a lot of them are, and they're very easy to target online. Uh, another good example would be watch collectors. So people that are into watches, it's something they are proud of, it's something they are passionate about, and it's definitely niche, and they're easy to identify. So let me give you some bad examples, so it's not just all about, you know, this is good, this is good, this is good. Uh, a bad example would be if you wanna build a brand around people that are just like rabid online shoppers, people that buy anything and everything. Now, what's good about them is they are easily identifiable because you can target people that spend a lot of money online, but the problem is they're not niche because they, you know, kind of would buy whatever they're into at that moment, and they're also not going to be proud of the fact that they just buy anything and everything, so it's not going to be someone you're going to get to actively engage with your content, so that would be bad. Now, let me give you another example of something that would be bad when it comes to building a branded business, um, but something that also would be good for drop shipping. So they don't always go hand in hand. Okay. So bad would be people with sleep apnea. So people that can't breathe when they sleep. Uh, they use something called a CPAP machine, which helps them to stay alive. And uh, you know that's something that is definitely needed. There's a huge market for it. People spend a lot of money online for them. And that would actually make a good online store but it would not make a good branded business because they're not gonna be proud of the fact they have it. They're not gonna be passionate about it. Uh, they will be easily identifiable, they will be niche, but they're not gonna be actively engaging with your content and uh, you know spreading the word, which is what you want out of this. So let's move on and do some persona and brand voice tips. The first that I would say is that you should always attract and repel different segments of your market. That is important. You can't have everybody that's into grilling, for example, love you if you wanted to get into home grilling. You need to have a unique voice. You need to stand out in a world of content. There's just so much stuff out there that's published every second of every minute of every hour of every day. You need to make yours actually stand out and be unique. Make it be opinionated so people will either come to you or be turned off one way or the other. It's fine, but that's how you're going to stand out. Uh, also, you, your voice, right, your brand voice should match your market. So that means speaking their language. You want to be able to resonate with 
with them with words they're already using. It'll make the whole process a lot more natural and it will make them want to become part of your tribe. Now, let me give you an example here and uh, we'll use that home grillers example if you wanted to build a brand around that. Now, um, like I just Googled home grillers and this was one of the first images that came up, right? Bunch of dudes that look like the type of people that you would think would be into this and nothing wrong with that. And I'm not saying this to be prejudiced or anything, but if you watch any of like those grill master shows on the food channel or anything or the cooking channel, you'll see what I mean. Like there is a very specific type of person. Um, again, not everybody, but the majority of people that are in that industry that have this, you know, passion, they're a very similar group of people. And if those are the ones you're targeting, you have to use the words that they use so that you can resonate with them and not just be another random ad in their newsfeed. Now, let's talk about some tips for creating the content that you're going to be sharing with them. Because again, you don't need products to start. You could just try to get them to start to kind of flock towards your brand. So when you're creating content, I would say the easiest thing to do and the best thing to do is just start with easy wins. So we'll keep using this example of home grillers. Let's say you wanted to target them as your market. Again, we'll picture these guys being our target market. Uh, all I would do if I was doing this is create a Facebook business page. I would create an Instagram account and honestly, I would post some memes because memes get people to engage. Now, I wouldn't just po post memes about you know meat or anything like that or grilling. I would post things that resonate with these people, right? With my target market, with the people that I want to uh, be part of my brand and be part of my company. So something like this would, I'm sure, work really well. I might do it just as a test, but uh, like this meme, right? It says, why did the vegan cross the road to tell somebody else that she's a vegan? So, um, you know, people would either love that or they would hate it, but I bet that some of the people in that photo and a large segment of people in that audience would think this is funny. And again, we're not trying to get them to buy anything right now. We're trying to get them to like it, to make a laughy face on our post. We're trying to get them to share it and we're trying to get their 10 friends that have the same hobbies to see it and do the same, okay? That is the goal of all of this. But if you're thinking like, Anton, okay, that, that does make sense. I could see where you're going with this, but how is anybody gonna see my stuff, right? Like if I just make a Facebook page and it has one like, that's me, and maybe one other, that's my mom, how is anybody actually going to see this? Well, I'll show you, okay? Um, again, what I would do, let's just say I made a Facebook page called Home Grill Lifestyle. Then I would post a meme like this. I'd probably have my own made that was very similar. And then I would have very simple text and I would say something like this, you know, like and share if you agree with a laughing face, okay? So here's how people see it with ads, obviously. We're gonna pay for it. Now, the good thing is you can get some very, very low costs to get crazy engagement if you do this right. So the way that we do it is we create what we call our seed audience. Now, our seed audience on Facebook is people that we think might be interested in this, right? So we make that happen by targeting the people that we think would be interested in this on Facebook. So we give Facebook the data and we let them figure it out for us. So if I was doing this, my target would be the United States because that's where I'd be doing business and that's where I know grilling is huge. I'd be targeting men because when you search in audience insights who likes grilling, it's mostly men. So I would choose that. Um, also, I found the data in Facebook that shows most of them are between the ages of 25 and 55. So I'd be targeting them. And then for an interest, I would put grilling because obviously that's what I want. Now, again, if you do this right, even with very small budgets, you could have things like this go viral. And if you look at the numbers on the bottom of the screen right now, you know, it's very possible to get thousands upon thousands of uh, reactions, of comments, of shares. And it's not just because you're posting this, it's because you're posting it, you're resonating with the audience. I can't stress that enough. It's not just because you post and put money behind it. It's because you post something that resonates with the people you're trying to reach. Then you put money behind it, getting it to them, and you give them a reason to actually share it. Okay, that's how this works. And again, that could mean that you spend $10 and put this in front of Bob, and Bob shares it and puts it in front of, you know, Steve. John, Joe, and Sally, then they share it and put it in front of their network and so on and so on and so on. That is how this process works to uh, to actually get the process growing organically. So let me do this. Let me actually show you a real world example. Okay, so what you're looking at right now is Facebook Audience Insights. This is a, a free tool to use. It is in Facebook Business Manager. So if you don't have a Facebook Business Manager account yet, just go to business.facebook.com. It will pull up this screen once you make your account, which is free, by the way. And then basically what I'm going to do right now is find those people. So right now it's showing me by default all the monthly active users on Facebook in the United States. So you can see that's between 200 and 250 million. Now it says United States. That's where 
again, I want to target, so I'm going to leave that as is. If you're doing this in another country, obviously make it the country you want to do business in. Now, like I mentioned earlier, let me pull up those stats that I had so I can get this to match. Yep, we're looking for men between 25 and 55. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to change this to 25. I'm going to go up to 55 right here. And then I'm going to select men. And you can see as I'm doing this, the audience size shrinks. So it went from 200 to 250 million to 50 to 60 million. But remember, I want to have that interest of grilling. So I'm going to click right there where it says interests. And then I'm going to type in grilling. And then I'm going to click that. And then now you could see I have between seven and eight million monthly active people. So great, right? That was that easy. That's how I'm finding my seed. Okay, that, that's all I did. That's it. Now, what I want to do from here is create that ad that has that meme or that has that thing that gets them to engage with my content. So I'm going to come right up here and I'm going to click create ad, this little green button. And I'll just do it for now using the ad create tool. So I'll click that. And I'm not actually going to like post an ad now because I don't have that page. I just want to show you how I would be doing this. You could see here when you make your Facebook campaigns, it says what's your objective. And I do recommend using the objectives that they recommend because that is really, I mean, they're good. Like the Facebook algorithm is, it knows what it's doing. So uh, remember, I want engagement from this. I'm not looking for sales. So typically like direct response type stuff, you would have the objective being conversions, but being that's not what I'm doing here, I'm just building the brand. I'm going to click this because I want people to engage with my stuff. So I'm gonna click that, I'm gonna come down here, I would name it and call it whatever, engagement, you know, grilling meme. I'm not gonna do any split tests or anything. Click continue. Now it should have that audience saved, it does. So here's my audience. And then as I come down here, it's going to ask me to make the ad, right? So I would put, personally, if I was really doing this, I do a daily budget of five bucks, let it run for a few days and see what happened. So I'd put that and then go to next. And then these are some of my pages. But yeah, again, if I was really doing this, I would go ahead and start creating the ad and it would show me it here. So uh, you might know how to do this already, but yeah, I'd create the ad, it would show me a preview there. And then when it was ready, when it matched my meme, I would go ahead and I would just click confirm and then boom, it's literally that easy to start. Okay, it's that simple. So yeah, that's the process of actually taking that data that you have in your head, like your hypothesis of who your people are, and then posting an ad to get them to actually engage with your company and to start building up that social proof. Now, if you're wondering like, well, why would I just do that right like if I if I set that up and people started engaging well where do I go from there right well let me show you so what's gonna happen after people like and share your stuff is you're gonna build new audiences in Facebook of people that have engaged with your stuff so this is a screenshot from one of our Facebook ad accounts and as you could see here um, maybe you don't understand what it stands for but insta means Instagram so that's an audience of people that have engaged with our Instagram account in the past year 140,000 people right there then we have Facebook people that engaged with our posts as you could see there we have 280,000 people that have engaged with our stuff in the past year. And this goes on and on, right? You build these audiences off of those people that are engaging, and these are the people that you can then offer products to, people that you can then show your new content, content to, people that are starting to become part of your tribe, and you continue to go through the process of putting new stuff in front of them that resonates with them. And then, of course, when it's time to make the offer, you have these audiences to make the offer to. Now, just please know that this process, right, it's not stuff that happens overnight. It can happen pretty quick if you get your market and your message right. It can happen very fast, but this is definitely a long-term play. It's something you're really gonna wanna do if you want every single person in your industry and in your market to know who you are, meaning to know who your brand is. If that's your goal, if you wanna be number one, if you wanna become the authority, this is step one. Start building these audiences, start creating goodwill in the marketplace, start getting everybody to see who you are. And from there, there's a lot more I could talk about this and I probably will in the future, but for now, get started with this. And uh, yeah, I'll just say, I hope you found this video useful and helpful as always. If you did, please give this video a like or a thumbs up and definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash dropship lifestyle if you haven't already. Um, 
Also, let me know, you know, we're getting back into the full swing of things here with our retreat coming up. Gonna be putting out a lot of new content and I would love to know what you wanna know, okay? If there's any topics you wanna hear me cover in future Dropship Weekly episodes, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you wanna hear more of and I'll probably add it to our schedule. If it makes sense, if people like it and give it thumbs up, I'll definitely add it to what I'll be publishing in the future. So that's it, hope you enjoyed this as always. Uh, thank you for watching this week's episode of Dropship Weekly and as always, I'll be back next Thursday with another episode right here on the Dropship Lifestyle channel. So thank you and I'll talk to you soon.